you can go see a shrink or you can take all this medication. And I've always been anti-medication. I don't want to put chemicals in my body. I don't want to be depending on medication the rest of my life. So to me, that wasn't an option. I was searching for that dopamine to hit me in a natural way. It wasn't something that I was seeking out of a pill. It was one of those things that I knew when it hit me, it was gonna hit me and I was like, this is my thing. And I, I just hadn't found it. You know, I've always told myself I was gonna hunt. I was like, I'm gonna go hunt whitetail one of these days. Join the military, fast forward, I get injured. And that was no longer in my crosshairs. It was something that was there, but I was focused on recovery, going to the hospital, doing therapy. And one day, one of my buddies calls me and he's like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, I'm just gonna hang out at the house, watch TV, you know. And he goes, well, why don't you uh, pack up your stuff and let's go hunting? I get all my stuff, rifle, whatnot, and the night prior to that, I remember laying in bed and I said, you know what, I'm not gonna go. See, at the time I wasn't comfortable with the way that I looked with my injuries. It kind of felt like an outcast and, you know, I'm not gonna be accepted. Like it was, it was just kind of me getting in my head. And the next morning my alarm went off and, you know, I forgot to turn it off and it was pretty early. And I remember laying in bed and I was like, man, well, my truck's packed, everything's in there, like, just go. Just go, like, what's the worst that can happen? I was like, if you don't like it, just get back in your truck and leave, you know? As I was driving out there, I went from being in the city to all these cars and all this noise. And as soon as we got into the countryside, it was just, this inner peace kind of came over me and I was comfortable. I was like, wow, like, what's going on? And I finally make my way up to the lodge and, you know, I ring the doorbell and this dude in a wheelchair with no legs comes out and he's like, what's up, brother? And I was like, wow, you know, like it, it impacted me right away because he's there in a wheelchair with no legs. Like it really changed my perspective really, like really fast. You know, at the time I really wasn't sleeping. I still had trouble sleeping. So I would stay up pretty late. I remember just staying up late and out of nowhere, like this dude that's a little taller than me sits in front of me and he was like, you wanna have a drink? I was like, yeah, of course. So we started drinking. We got pretty intimate with one another. You know, he was asking me, you know, what had happened. So I pretty much walked him through my whole story. And at the end of it, you know, he looked over at me and he goes, how are you doing? And I was like, I'm doing great. And you know, he asked the question again, but he kind of pointed up to like, how was your mental health doing? And up until then, you know, I really hadn't opened up to anyone else. Next thing I know, it's like four or five in the morning and everybody starts coming out. And my buddy goes, dude, you've been awake the whole night? I was like, yeah. And he's like, what have you been doing? I was like, oh, just, you know, with that dude. And he goes, with Chris? I was like, yeah, with Chris. And he goes, you know who that is? And I was like, he goes, that's Chris Kyle. And I go, oh, wow. Um, who's Chris Kyle? And he goes, dude, that's the you know, Navy SEAL, American Sniper, la la la. And I was like, dude, I had no idea. And so I go get ready, I come back out, and Chris is like, hey, where are you going? I was like, I have no idea, who am I with? And he goes, you're hunting with me. Like, you and I are hunting together. And I was like, cool. Deer comes out, and I'm like, oh wow. And I was this nice little management six pointer, and I was and I started shaking like a leaf because he said, all right, that's the one we're gonna shoot. And I'm like, okay. So I'm just shaking really bad. I've never shot a buck in my life. I've never shot a deer. I remember just kind of walking through everything, like control your breathing, get them in your crosshairs. And so I get behind it. And as I'm doing that, and you know, I take the shot, I watch that deer fall and I just turn around and this adrenaline just came over me. And I was like, dude, I can't believe I just shot my first deer and he goes, what do you mean? I was like, yeah, that's like the first buck I've ever shot. Like the first white, he's like, you've never shot a white? I was like, no. And he's like, oh my God. 
And so we're all excited in the blind. He's high-fiving, I'm high-fiving, you know, we go out and get it. And it just kind of clicked. It was something that clicked. And honestly, the whole time that I was there, there was something that I hadn't had in a while. Oh man, when I got when I got done after that hunt, I was addicted. I was very very hooked to the point where like, you know, friends would call me, "Hey, we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go play you know pool or whatever. You have, you want to come?" Nope, I can't. And you know, they finally come to the house and like, what are you doing, I'm like, dude? I'm learning. They kind of thought I was a little too extreme, but to me that was just what I liked, and I wanted to learn the most that I could. I was doing research on everything. What's the best camouflage? The best bullet? What's a good scope? You know, now I can look at a deer and be like, oh, that's a two-year-old, or let's let this one walk, you know, give him some more time, and things like that. You start looking at, at animals a lot different, and that's literally what I did for the next six, seven months, and then after that, it's just, it's become a lifestyle ever since. Obviously, there, there's a great appreciation, right? There, and there's a respect towards the outdoors and the animal because uh, I believe we're in a world where we're so divided right now that when you go out the outdoors and you're hunting, whether it be a neo guy or white tail or whatever it is that you're hunting, that animal doesn't care if you're white, if you're Mexican, if you're black, if you're purple, whatever color you are, it doesn't matter to it. It's it's you against them and it, it it makes you appreciate that animal even more when it's providing for your family the one connection that i think that sticks out the most to me is our ancestors and our ancestors here in texas you know roam these lands and you know they hunted very very different than we did you know like you look back at it they were doing it with spears and different things but at the end of the day i feel like how modern we got into them it still connects us because we're all trying to put meat on the table and that's that's the ultimate goal and that's the connection to this is just stepping on on a hilltop and here in texas somewhere in the middle of nowhere uh, you know maybe my great-great-grandfather did the same thing at that same exact moment and it's just kind of connecting us back together so yeah there's there's a there's definitely a connection and in, and in, in the outdoors and hunting that goes way beyond anything that i can explain when you're in the service and you're going after a high value target there's a plan before you execute the mission and the same thing goes with hunting. What gear should we bring? How much food are we gonna need? How long are we gonna be out there? And it just kind of feels like a mission again. And then when it's when it's time to go, it's that same feeling of when I used to kick that door and then we go right through it. It's just kind of put that sack out and you, you tighten it down, you start hiking. And then as soon as you take that first step, it's going through that door again and it's just, it's on. Every single time that I know I get in the right space is when I start thinking of my teammates that I lost. I feel like everybody's right there with me and we're experiencing this together. And in a weird way, we're, we're back together. We're doing this as a unit again. And it just brings all those memories back, right back. I mean, it's just kind of crazy. And then you're like, I can't wait to do it again. The minute that you go out there, I mean, it's quiet. Like it is so quiet and it's so soothing. And you start asking questions like, man, did I do this wrong? Am I being a good father? Am I a good son? Am I a good husband? You can really get to know yourself when you're out there because it's just you and your thoughts.
I felt hunting was the thing for me. It just changed everything in my life. It helped me maintain and stay busy, and, and it just kind of little by little chipped away at those demons and uh, those nightmares and everything else that I struggled before with, with survivor's guilt, all that stuff. This was just chipping away at it every single time to where I haven't had any episodes, none of that stuff. I've just been happy, and it's been life-changing for me. I always tell people that our brain is the strongest muscles that we have. And the minute that you let that muscle consume you, you're done. I refuse to be a victim. I refuse to let my brain consume me. I said, no, I'm going to take ownership of my wounds. I'm going to own this, and it's not going to own me. I look back at it now, and it's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. I feel like it helped everything about my mental health. But right then and there, I felt like, to me, I was able to reset. I felt like somebody put a pill in front of me and said, here, swallow this, you'll be fine. And the minute that I took it, it was, that was what the outdoors was. And up until today, there has not been a medication that no doctor has ever given me that's made me feel that way again.